I want to show you a very interesting comment from Digital Foundry about black frame insertion, DLSS 3.0, the VSync issue, and their opinion about using that technology to get perfect rock solid 120, which was my my vision. The first time I saw the reveal of DLSS 3.0 motion interpolation, I was like, man, that's just exactly what I need. I know it's going to be supported on the 30 series eventually. It's just a matter of time. So my 3080 can give me 60 frames on every single game and my CPU too. So that basically means I can double the frame rate. I can get 120 for black frame insertion on every single game. Doesn't matter which one it is. So that's absolutely perfect. But the problem is there's an issue with VSync and the input lag. So I want you to hear their take in that issue. And also they are also commenting on black frame insertion at 120. So I show you before, uh, John has an LG CX and he likes a lot black frame insertion. He says, oh, I use that on my PS5 all the time. And he was always you know, telling Alex, you have to try this, it's amazing, especially at 120. So Alex got an LG C1. And I show you before, he said, I love it. <laughs> like he said, highly recommended black frame insertion on 120. He said, I tried on Doom Eternal, a 4K 120, and it was glorious. <laughs> he said it was looking better than a 300 hertz laptop screen that he has in terms of motion clarity. Amazing. So let me show you their comments. And then, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Uh, because this, the VSync situation is not optimal right now. It's not good. I want so he's talking about the VSync problem with DLSS 3.0 motion interpolation. VSync and DLSS 3. I want a interesting way to cap the frames uh, that allows the GPU to be working quite well and not just being like, I don't want to use, not like shooting itself in the knee essentially to so he's basically talking about the situation that with this uh, vSync uh, problem you don't want a GPU to reach 120 that 4090 so basically reaching 120 or beyond is a problem because you either get screen tearing or you turn on vSync and you get terrible input lag so it's like the GPU because it's so good it's going to reach that 120 and it's shooting in, uh, himself in the knee, you know, basically is damaging the, the performance by reaching 120, which is something that they have to fix. A good VSync experience. Um, that's what I would really like. And until they get there, this question is a bit theoretical because they're not there yet. Uh, I would love that. I would love this. I tried out actually all my testing. I didn't even say this in the video. I did all my testing with BFI on. Um, <laughs> uh, because John was, you know, I, ever since I've been to John's place, I've been like, BFI is great, BFI is great. Um, so I did all of my 120 FPS V-Sync testing with BFI on. So you see what he's saying? You, the previous video where he showed the uh, DLSS3 analysis, all his testing for 120 was with an LGC1 with Motion Pro High with BFI on. And that's a huge detail, and, and you know, let me let me let me keep <laughs> showing to you. see if like what artifacts I was seeing. So that's how I did it, um, and that's how I used it. The only thing is, it was not, in you know, on a game per game basis, it was not necessarily optimal from an input latency perspective due to that issue I highlighted out with VSync increasing input latency much more than VSync off when you hit the VSync limit. Um, like in a game like Spider Man, I honestly didn't really notice and care much of anything. It actually felt really good. Uh, Cyberpunk was the same way. The Lyra or Lyra demo, oddly enough, with VSync, felt so much heavier than the other games on the mouse. Um, that was a very interesting thing to talk about that I didn't talk about. <laughs> um, because it was just like, it felt weird to just like inter interject like a really subjective opinion after doing this super scientific thing. Um, but yeah, so like... Yeah, so he's basically saying, I tried all the testing on, on the C1 with Black Frame Insertion on 120 because John is always telling me, was always telling me this is just amazing. And what he's going to talk about is that all the small defects that he was able to detect, so the artifacts, he's saying maybe I was able to see that because Black Frame Insertion gives you such a perfect motion clarity that 
everything is revealed. <laughs> I would love to see this happen on uh, laptops. It's going to be a really cool situation. Uh, very curious to see what type of laptops are going to be made with this because I've got like a. Th What's that Razer laptop I have? Which is like 300, 300 hertz. Yeah. Nah, it's a laptop. So you need, was... you'd need to run it, uh, what, you know, 75 or 150. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's like somewhat compelling. It would be, you know, maybe this is where this technology is, is even better than on desktop. Maybe it is laptops. I don't know. Just does the idea of BFI appeal to you, John, if you can use DLSS3 just to lock to 120? I mean, oh, sure. That's 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 my vision. I'm so main. I like I like them because they they know what they're talking about, and they focus on the gaming experience. Okay, so that's that's my question. That's exactly my question. This is perfect for Black from Insertion on 120. Having support on my on my 3080 for DLSS3 motion interpolation with good input lag with vsync is going to mean perfect gaming experience no matter what no matter what the game i will always get 120 with tremendous resolution tremendous fidelity and perfect motion clarity that's the question the only thing i would be concerned is is does it reveal the the generated frame issues more that's easily the question. That is the question i have the answer no <laughs> So I've tested motion interpolation on this LGC1. I know the artifacts, okay? And I tested the motion interpolation with and without black frame insertion. So with no black frame insertion, it looks blurry, okay? But you can still see the same defects, okay? So 120 using, for example, 60 frames per second, 60 hertz on the games. And then you use the blur 10. No motion pro on this LGC one. I can see the artifacts. Uh, basically the artifacts that you see are, I think they are called, of course, soap opera effect, but they are called occlusion artifacts. Basically when you have two vertical objects, two parallel objects, it doesn't matter if they are vertical or horizontal. If you have uh, a background, so, so what is behind those two objects, you see the artifacts and it doesn't matter. If I turn a uh, black from insertion on and off, it doesn't matter. So on this LGC one, you can do both. You can do motion interpolation and black from insertion at the same time. The problem is you cannot do that on game optimizer mode. So the input lag is not perfect. I guess the input lag is going to be like 80 milliseconds, maybe, plus what the game uh, is, you know, plus the input lag of the game. So yeah, like 100 milliseconds at the end almost. Oh, Alice, what did, what did you see? I, I mean, I was doing it all at 120. I did not do any... I found it useless to do any testing where there was just full screen tearing. I was like, this is not a play scenario. No one's playing this. Yeah, but you know, look, the concept of black frame insertion is similar to DLSS3 and that you're strobing. Yeah, know? right. And the question is, are you, when you have your bright frames with BFI, are you actually highlighting the generated frames? No. So this is very interesting, very interesting because Black from insertion. So the idea of DLSS3 motion interpolation is the same idea as black from insertion, which is basically incre increase the motion clarity. That's it, <laughs> because you're not increasing the responsiveness. So of course they are completely different things. So DLSS 3.0 is creating an entire frame, and black from insertion is not inserting. A whole black frame that's not what is happening so black frame insertion regardless of the OLED TV you have Th there is PWN dimming well let me make it simple let me make it simple so black frame insertion what is doing is is narrowing the the window you can see on the screen so the way this sample and whole displays work is that they refresh uh, they have an image on the screen all the time until the new one comes, okay? And what gives you the motion clarity based on Blur Buster's law is the pixel visibility time. So on a sample and hold display, the pixel visibility time is <laughs> the entire time. You see, if you have 60 hertz, you have, you have the pixels on screen all the time for each frame. 
So what black frame insertion does, depending on the setting, low, medium, high, we have on this LG C1, what black frame insertion does is that it, it changes the window visibility. So instead of you having the entire uh, frame on screen all the time, you have a smaller frame. So it's like this, it's showing you this, and it's scrolling down and the rest is black, okay? So by having less pixel, uh, less pixel visibility time, you get better motion clarity. So DLSS 3.0 is completely different because it's just doubling the frame rate. It's just adding more frames. So with black frame insertion, depending on the window size, you can see the smaller, the better the motion clarity. Depending on that window size, you're going to get better motion clarity. Okay. It is independent from the refresh rate. So you can have, so what matters is the pixel visibility time. You can have a bigger window size at a given refresh rate, and that is going to look blurrier than a smaller window size. Okay. So I believe this LG C1 is 50% window size. When you have black from insertion, you see half of the screen and it refreshes. It comes down, the rest is black, black, and then it keeps refreshing in that way. So it is completely different, but they are trying to achieve the same thing. Yeah, so that's basically. Yeah. No, it's still, uh, I did it, that's why I did it on my test with BFI, and maybe it actually exaggerated things more than most higher persistence displays would have. Like, maybe I really should have put that in the video. So I don't think. It is exaggerating, but it's definitely revealing everything. Because I was testing, for example, uh, Sifu, and turn off motion blur, turn off anti-aliasing, and I was able to see, with black frame insertion on 120, a small animations from the bushes, I was able to see them uh, blurry. <laughs> so like TAA blurry, like using temporal data, like you see that blurry. And I'm sure if I'm not using 120 black from insertion, I cannot see that. So he's, of course, he's right. Um, like, for example, like, I think some of the stuff I saw with BFI on, like, very specifically, I said, like, I noticed a slight darkening when uh, muzzle flashes were occurring. Like, it was a darker yeah. look than the real one. I honestly don't think on, like, a persistence display, uh, like, like, one without BFI, I honestly don't think you notice that because... The, f the frames in your eye are just going to be blending over when there's a muzzle flash anyway. It's just like the brightness level there, especially with like HDR brightness. Um, I don't think you maybe see that. So this is a really cool... John, I would say actually, when, whenever you get an RTX 4000 card, I would love that we can maybe I'll talk try. about this in a video. It would be so fun. That would be great. About it. I really want... I would like him to talk about black frame insertion because he, he, he has the CX for a long time and he... I'm sure he knows a lot about that. Maybe they don't know the trick, <laughs> the HDR trick I'm using. <laughs> I'm I'm sure if they try my trick, they will love it. And they what they probably do for black frame insertion, for the brightness based on their comments, is they just use HDR and probably dynamic tone mapping. That's probably what they do. Uh, because you're, you have <laughs> well, maybe they know better than me. Maybe they maybe they do. But I think they are too busy <laughs> doing other things. I've been laser focused on, on this LG C1, so yeah. it would be nice <laughs> if we can do <laughs> a live stream and I can share my HDR tips, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. So you'd be perfect for it. Yeah, he's a fan of the CRT, I mean, Digital Foundry, they are the reason why the CRTs are so expensive, <laughs> in my opinion because they hype up the FW900 and after that $3,000, $6,000 for that monitor and yeah, <laughs> it's their fault. They hype the CRTs and yeah, it's their fault. <laughs> um, question from Bespoken. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, just gonna finish there. I'm gonna recommend you to watch the, the Q&A of course. They talk about the 40, all the details about the 4090. And also, I want to recommend you, uh, of course, to watch the DLSS analysis uh, video. This was a master, master class. I mean, it was not a master class. It was a 
perfect like <laughs> the coverage here answered every single question in my opinion it was just uh, a masterpiece of a coverage here one of the best from them and that's a lot to say because they are very good in what they do also i want to recommend you this this channel you know i've been thinking about getting the 4090 and dlss 3.0 I like this YouTube channel from Daniel Owen, uh, I mean he's a big YouTube channel, he has 74,000 subscribers growing like crazy, he's doing a very good job and he showed, I'm gonna share this video on the description, he showed a side by side comparison between a 3080 12GB and a 4090 and that's exactly what I have so I was interested in that comparison and yeah 4090 is powerful but it's not powerful enough and then the DLSS has has the B-Sync issue DLSS uh, frame interpolation so yeah I'm like I don't it's not worth it in my opinion it's not worth it uh, if DLSS 3 was flawless then maybe but look at the comparison 64 frames per second versus 38 that's a massive difference when you are down to 38 frames to get 64 that's a massive massive difference yeah but not big enough <laughs> I can lower the settings and get a much better performance is it's not big enough not not worth it in my opinion but I'm gonna recommend you to watch his video I'm not gonna show um, a lot but yeah. into your case he, so that's certainly something to look uh, by the way also. if you're learning English by the way he has an amazing pronunciation to learn English I'm still trying to improve my language and I love to listen to him because his voice and his pronunciation is just perfect he's like an like an English teacher <laughs> it's amazing um, so yeah, I'm gonna recommend you to watch his channel and this video if you are interested is that 3080 12 gigabytes and the 4090 head to head and he shows a lot of uh, comparisons with different games, Spider-Man, Plague Tale and yeah, let me know if you have any questions.